Hey everybody, so today I have here, this is a Western Digital My Book Essential. It's a one terabyte drive that works via USB and a power adapter, and that's how it really turns on. So the customer came in, they said when they plug it in uh, to their desktop that they're not able to retrieve data. They just see that it powers on, and sometimes if you actually put your ear up to it, you're able to hear some clicks, and that's really about it. So we're going to be taking a look at it. So since the drive is about this big, we're probably thinking, well, it must be a, like a desktop size drive, right? Because any other external drive that you get is probably going to be more like this, which is a smaller two and a half inch drive. So this was most likely going to have inside here. It's going to have a 3.5 inch uh, drive in here. We do know that the, the issue is what? There's a clicking sound. A clicking sound most of the time when you hear a clicking sound from a hard drive is what? If there's a main mechanical issue with the drive, maybe the head could be stuck, maybe there could be another issue. But I want to pick this one in particular because it's not making that typical clicking sound that you would hear from a drive where it's trying to read the data. This is actually making a, a different type of clicking sound. And let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we get. All right, so I have the drive here and I'm going to go ahead and connect it. I have my power connector here and I'm going to also connect it to USB and see what we get. It has one of those little older USB ports, a little bit thicker, but that's fine. I'm going to connect it to my computer here. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and connect power. And let's go hear the noise it's making. A typical clicking noise is more a little bit more consistent and while it's especially trying to read data or you'll hear it maybe click a few times and shut off. This one is trying to power on and then it seems like it, it kind of power cycles over and over again. So it sounds like it's not fully powering on. So what does that mean that it's not fully powering on? Most likely that there is an issue with uh, the PCB board here. Now one thing we do know, this isn't going to be your typical board. We can kind of see through here is that there's a regular USB, there's a USB and then there's also a power connection here. And if you can see even here, you can see the drive itself here. It's a little bit hard to see through the holes here, but you can see the drive. And actually, um, it's not, you can't perfectly see this, but I believe that this is a connection. The drive is over on this side, and then there is a separate connection that goes on, on this side over here. So that usually means that this three and a half inch drive is connected to a separate board here. If the separate board is damaged, then it will be easy to be removed and we can just separate the drive, plug it in a sled, and hopefully that's gonna uh, power on the drive and extract data. Now, let's go ahead and see if that's really gonna be the case. So what we need to do is we need to open up one of these drives because we can't do anything without opening it up. And these are pretty straightforward to open. You just need to get a little bit of a gap in here and, and then you should be ready to go. Uh, these usually have a gap on the top side. It depends on the age of these drives and to see what it is, but uh, I need to start with a gap somewhere. So if you get a little bit of a prying tool, you can probably pry a little bit of the side here, just to at least get a nice, nice little edge. And then I could probably use like a flat or something here. You see that? Now I can get in here. And it's gonna be wrapped around the whole entire side. So it's gonna pop up like that. Now since this is a bit up, we can just slide this out. And what do we see here? We see that we have a Western Digital one terabyte, uh, three and a half inch drive. And we see that there's something connected on the back where this kind of goes with uh, the, the USB. Now, what we want to do is just remove this because we see this as a typical three and a half inch drive. We take this out, usually just kind of slides out a bit, I think after we had to unscrew things, right? Yeah, there's a little bit of, uh, oh, just like that. So it just kind of comes off, just lift on the backside and we're gonna push out this way because that's where our, our USB is, we want to go away from that. So we take it out and we see that it's covered by rubbers. The rubbers are there for um, protection against like vibration and uh, you don't want to have your drive being knocked around what we want to do is we just want to remove this part because we don't care about this part because it's defective right so if we take this off if i could just unscrew it here there's only a few screws there's five screws total looks like but this is the one i really care about is this and this is going to slide up a little bit i think you can slide down see that and you want to make sure you slide down nicely because this is connected to a SATA drive see so there's a board on here and this is the board and we're pretty much hoping that this board is your problem because we don't care about this board if this board does have a problem and this board does have a defect it doesn't matter because we have a SATA connection here all this is is it's a converter from you see the SATA port here it's converting from SATA to a USB connection and this is just a board that's doing that for you so um, there's more point of failures on these types of drives that have these things but 
the point of failure is actually a good thing in at least our case because it's just removable and it's easy. So now you're left with this drive and we just have three screws go in the back here. And now this is an older drive. I'm sure a lot of the newer ones are, are quite a bit different, but most of the USB drives um, themselves are not actual USB drives unless you go ahead and check out our other video where they actually are. They have a PCB board that does have a USB connection here. Right, so they, you would have that, and then you would have to uh, to connect it to anything. You would have to convert um, from USB to SATA, which we do in that video. It's a very good video to explain that. If you want to go ahead and check it out, I'll link that in the video in the description below. But since we're very lucky that this is the opposite, this has an external USB board that plugs in. We have now just a regular SATA connection, and what you can do, you can get any of these. You can get them pretty cheap on a lot of sites. There, this is a, a SATA to USB sled. Now we're going back to USB because we want to be able to read this drive somehow, right? And that's how we get the data off. So we're going to have this connection, which is a sled. You see it has a SAD connection. It's like any sled and it has a USB end on it. So we can actually go ahead and plug it. And this is USB 3.01. It has a power connection and everything. So now if we plug this in, we're going to go ahead and hope that it's just going to go ahead, read, and there won't be a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. I'm going to go power it up. And uh, we're looking for blinks, and we're not looking for power cycles anymore, like for our other one. So I have it right here. I'm going to plug it in. Let's go ahead and plug in our power connection. Or actually, it's already plugged in, so we just need to put the power button on. You heard that? So that's a good sign. That means it recognizes. And you see the lights just start blinking soon. And the disk should start spinning. You see that? It did take a little bit of time, and it actually did come up on mine. I'm going to go ahead and show that. See that blinking is a really good sign. And the, the sound, the Windows sound recognizing the drive is a really good sound too. So I'm going to go ahead and see. There's not, <laughs> there's not much data at all on this thing. Uh, you can see even on the little drive here that there's some things. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and just double click it. It doesn't look like there's too much. It doesn't look like there's only about 10 gigs used. But that's kind of the point. But you can see there's all this type of data here. It's been modified for a while. It's a little bit older. You can see the date modified, all those type of things. So for this, we can at least extract the data. We can put it on. We don't need a drive, at least this, because there's only about like 10 gigs of data. If they want another drive, we can put it on another one terabyte drive. We always like to match what they have. But since it's not a lot of data, maybe we can just put it on a, on a small USB and they can be on their way with that as well. This type of instance is a very, very rare, but it does happen. Um, where you see this, this, and this is kind of why I made the video. Most of the time, if you hear a clicky noise, it is a problem with the actual drive itself. But from our experience, listening to the drive, we're used to this type of click versus a click that has a physical, a real physical issue, and that may have a damaged head, and maybe could even scratch the platter. We do data recoveries on drives that are definitely clicking. We do head replacements. Uh, if you're really interested in learning more about like Western Digital Drives and other hard drives, definitely subscribe for more content, and also check out our other video on the drives where we talk about Western Digital Drives. We really hope you guys enjoyed watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.